St. Michael's Riverside Episcopal Ministry Center welcomes you to morning prayer, Bright Two, on the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We will do this silently. God our Father offers us forgiveness in his holy name and bids us to live our lives anew, free from sin, because of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. As, As it was, was in the beginning, beginning is and now, now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell all of his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek him, seek the Lord, rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. When he summoned Zaphon, salmon, famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in the collar of iron until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The word of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach the elders wisdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. Hello, everyone. This is a story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Israel, his father, said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. Go now and see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock and bring word back to me. A man found him wandering in the field. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. Before he came too near to them, they conspired to kill him. 
They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Let us kill him and throw him into one of these. We shall say that a wild animal has devoured him. Reuben said to them, shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him. Reuben planned to rescue Joseph from the pit and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, a long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into the pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilad with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianites, traders, passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they took Joseph to Egypt. There includes or ends our reading. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. And he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing. From the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known to, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. And we all say, Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes. For one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture said, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call upon him. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, thank you, Jesus. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear him without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news.
Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far away from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost. They cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. When the disciples saw him, they were afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out, so Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why do you doubt? The Gospel of the Lord. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Church, feel free to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Show us your mercy, O oh Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O oh Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all the nations. Let not the needy, O oh Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O oh God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may never forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. <clears throat> so clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. Mm -hmm. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Mm -hmm. Then may it let be said, let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose Father, working in us, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I just wanted to share a short reflection about the study today, how Joseph went into Egypt and no large cause of his own. This was out of his control and uh, out of his power. He was forced in that situation by his brothers. As we are today, forced into our situation in a type of Egypt in this COVID-19 phase. And not just America, not just in our household, but in the world. By no cause of our own, Christians alike. But God has a purpose for this, as God did with Joseph. God had a purpose to allow the restraint and the bondage that Joseph had at that time. It was not ideal in that situation at all whatsoever, nor is it ideal for us in COVID-19 during isolation and quarantine. But God has a purpose. As in the Psalm read, Joseph was promoted. That was his purpose, to be the governor of the land later on. He wasn't always in Egypt nor will we always be in this state of COVID-19. So as Joseph did, kept his faith in God, let's keep our faith in God and put our faith in his son, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Chris. Well, I'd like to uh, give just a short reflection as well on the gospel story today, which was Peter losing his faith at the very moment that it was so obvious to all of us who were watching him as he stood on the water and saw his savior across the sea and then looked down and said oh my goodness i can't be doing this and his faith faltered just a bit and he went down into the water and at the same time jesus was walking on the water over to him held out his hand and said joseph i'm here come on you're fine. And 
this is a story that we hear over and over and over as Christians as we look at the different Bible stories. And it's a beautiful story. You have to think back for a moment that Peter was a fisherman when Jesus first met him. And, and Jesus offered him the opportunity to come and be what he said, a fisher of men. Well, today we probably wouldn't say a fisher of men. We'd say a fisher of people. But Peter went along in faith. And Jesus and Peter became very good friends. And all of this time, there were many, many wonderful things happening and also scary things happening as the disciples went through the ministry with Jesus. Now, Peter, in spite of his faith that was so strong at times, there were other times when he was just a sort of a mess. Some people might say he was a hot mess. Because, for example, this is the same Peter who denied Jesus three times on his way to the cross. This is the same Peter who didn't, even though he saw himself standing on the water, didn't believe that he could actually be standing on the water. This is the same Peter who, at times of crisis, still said, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And every time Peter said that, Jesus said, you are beloved. You are good enough. You will go with me. In fact, on you, Peter, I will build my church. This is the same Peter, the rock upon which the church is built. Now, I say this just to remind all of us that we can be going along in life and have all kinds of challenges. We can make bad decisions. We can fall apart and become a mess. But with Jesus, we can get up out of the ocean where we fell in. He gives us his hand. We get up and we go forward. And even if we fall apart again, Jesus doesn't leave us. He's right there with us. And he says, you're my follower, you're a believer, I don't leave you. In fact, we heard in Romans uh, um, a week or two ago, nothing can separate us from the love of God if we follow him. Nothing. So all of us can fall apart in our life and know that we still have a chance to start over. That's the beauty of, of following Jesus, that he already paid the price for all of our sins, and that he's just there with us every day with his hand outstretched saying, come on, you've got another chance. Come on, my follower. I know that you're weak, but you know what? I love you in your weakness. I know that you're broken, but I love you in your brokenness. We're not called to be perfect people. He invites us to be faithful people. He invites us to be lovers of the people we meet, especially those who are suffering, especially those who don't think they're good enough to come to church, especially those who do, don't have any idea where their next piece of bread is coming from or how they're going to pay their bills. He invites us into community with one another. And I invite you, if you are out there lonely, you're hearing this and you're saying, I, I, I don't know what to do next. I want you to get in touch with us at St. Michael's because we have a whole community of people. Mm. And most of us have been broken at one, two, three, many times in our lives. But you know what? We're there to help pick you up. Our hand is outreached to you just the way Jesus stretched out his hand to Peter. So you get on over to St. Michael's. You'll find a place to be. You won't have to be lonely. You don't have to be perfect. And you are forgiven. And I hope I'll see you there. And thanks for listening this far. And now Deacon Barbara will give us our dismissal for this week. And we hope we'll see you again in the future. Deacon Barber, and back into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. 
raise up the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.